do as you like and you say you're a Christian. Then when you are faced with a situation that Christ will be glorified. And then that's when you begin to mention Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the Jesus you are mentioning, you're just mentioning out of fear. You know? You're mentioning out of fear. You can face a situation like this. When you, you have come in agreement with that name. When you have walked prior pursuit with that name. And you come before a situation that needs answer immediately. Hallelujah. And you mention that name with that understanding that you have. With boldness within you. And you find out that that thing will retreat. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because mentioning of the name of Jesus is connected to your believing. Connected to your heart. He's not, um, he's not a dot that you put on an eye. The name of Jesus is not a, T, a, a, a cross that like you, you cross a T with. No. So if I don't cross this T, no, 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 no. It's not when we, when we pray, we must say in the name of Jesus. So that ends it. No, 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 no. We must mean that it is by that name that we receive victory. Praise the Lord. Now, like she said, the Bible did not mention, teach us on the power of the blood of Jesus, how we can apply the blood. But the Holy Spirit has brought knowledge to us and understanding to us. That's why I love the scripture that Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will be with you and in you. He will teach you all things. That thing is so vast. Hallelujah. He will teach you all things. Now the Holy Spirit begins to enlighten our minds through the Old, script, the Old Testament into the New Testament. Letting us know that there is power in the blood. And there's power. If there was power in the blood of bulls, if there was power in the blood of sheep and lambs, how much more the power in the blood of Jesus Christ? Power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So now, if the blood was applied on the doorpost and death passed by, now I don't need to rub, use any blood on top of it. But I just need to declare that word because I know the power that is in the blood. Hallelujah. I just need to speak it. And as I speak it in the realm of the spirit, the blood comes to play. Nothing the devil dreads like the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Every time you, you plead the blood, it reminds him of his defeat. It reminds him. Anytime you, you, you break that bread, you begin to take communion by yourself. You are reminding him of his defeat. You are telling because the Bible says, in that scripture, it says, it says, this is, the, 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 this is my blood, which is shed for you. It did not tell us that this is the blood of Jesus, which was shed for us. That's um, 1 Corinthians 11, right? 20, 24, 26 down. This is my blood. When Jesus was drinking, was having his last supper with his, with his disciples, he didn't say, this is my blood, which would be shed for you. No. Jesus said, this is my blood. Jesus did not cut his body and put it inside one container and say, let's drink. No, he didn't do that. The Bible says it was the fruit of the vine. Hallelujah. The choices of the fruit of the vine, but it was the wine. And when he lifted the cup up, he said, first it was, it was bread. He didn't cut his flesh and say, let us share it and chop. No, 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 no. He took bread, unleavened bread. And he said, this is my body. He didn't say which will be broken for you. No. He said which is broken for you. Today as you do this with me. Hallelujah. He took the cup again and he said the same thing. This is my blood. It wasn't blood from his body. But you see, faith is beyond the natural. Hallelujah. What you say you get. What you say in faith happens in the realm of the spirit. That's why you don't talk anyhow. When it comes to the things of God. So Jesus said, this is my blood, which is shed. He had not gone to the cross. He was about to go to the cross. This is my blood, which is shed for you, for the remission of your sin. He said, do this, and as often as you do this, you do show the Lord's death. That is the law for the Holy Spirit to break down for us. Praise the Lord. So when I take that cup, I might put Fanta. One thing I might not use is Coke. I might put Fanta. I might use Rabina, I might use any kind of wine that is clean. As I put it in that cup, it will automatically becomes the blood. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus did not cut his flesh and put it inside there. So I do it as you do this in remembrance of me, as often as you do this. So every time I take that cup, I put it is on the prayer table. The bread is on the prayer table. Every time I put it and I begin to, I lift it up. I take the body, I lift it up. 
I said, this is the body of Christ. Which is. Which, I didn't say which was. You can't say was. Because Jesus didn't use the word was. Neither did Paul Apostle use the word was. Praise the Lord. This is means that. Every time that you take that cup. Any time that you take that bread. It is happening now. Hallelujah. The sacrifice happens there. Anytime you do it is now. Is is now. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says faith is what now. Hallelujah. So anytime I take that bread, it is now. I, I, I recognize the covenant immediately. I bring it to, I bring Calvary to my room. Hallelujah. I bring Calvary to my prayer room immediately. And I tell the devil, you can't touch, you can't steal, you can't kill. Hallelujah. Because this blood stands against you. And the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. What does it speak? It doesn't call for vengeance anymore. The blood of Abel called out for vengeance. Why? Avenge me, Lord. My brother killed me. Avenge my life. Cain killed me. So that's, that's what the blood of Abel was crying. And for vengeance. That he was wrongfully murdered. Wrongfully killed. So his brother Cain must suffer for it. Praise the Lord. But it tells us the blood of Jesus has no reason to cry for vengeance. Who is going to revenge Jesus? He came for this purpose and he died for this purpose. And for this cause he was raised from the dead. Praise the Lord. But why is he? <laughs> Hallelujah. That his death came through. Hallelujah. So at the end of the day, when, when, when that, oh God Almighty, when he says, he speaks better things. It means that the blood of Jesus speaks goodness in my life. He speaks health. speaks life. He speaks prosperity. He speaks everything that is good. Hallelujah. And just like she said, he speaks vengeance against my enemies. Hallelujah. He will deal with my enemy, but Jesus himself was not crying out for vengeance. But vengeance for what? For this purpose I was created. I was born. Hallelujah. So I'm not asking for vengeance on my life. Hallelujah. But anyone who touches one of these, anyone who touches one of these, I will not take it lightly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is, there is so much I can talk to you about the blood of Jesus. Because me, I've experienced it. I came from a ministry where we didn't mention the blood. It was like, why would you do that? It's out of context. Just use the name of Jesus. Then one day, a few years, some years ago, I had a terrible dream. Terrible dream. A terrible dream. I was in a terrible dream. I was on the street. And a, an elderly woman accosted me. I knew she was a priestess from somewhere. I knew she was a priestess from somewhere, from but the, of the land here because her language was of this land. Then she accosted me on the road, and as she was coming to me, the wind from her body was too strong. The wind was blowing me. I was saying, Jesus, Jesus. What I'm about to say is not that the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the most powerful, but there are situations that need the blood application. Do you get it now? So as she was coming towards me and was pointing something at me, was warning me, was warning me, the wind, I won't call it breeze, the wind from her was too strong. It was pushing me, that it was pushing me, pushing me, I was staggering. But I was going, inside me I was saying, ah, why am I calling the name of Jesus? And it's not working. I was calling the name of Jesus. I was calling the name of Jesus. She got close like this, to my face like this. Then I just said, it just came out of me. I didn't think it. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, she staggered back. And as I saw she staggered back, I kept saying the blood of Jesus, and she fell to the ground. Praise the Lord. That's my own revelation, so nobody can tell me otherwise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've had, I've shared here with you, when I had the same, they attack me all of the time. I had the same similar situation, a woman again, an elderly woman again. She came to attack me. And then, I was saying, in Jesus' name, in, I'm teach, I want to teach two, two different things. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And she will not just budge. She was en en enchanting things against me. And the next thing that came to me was, Because I used to go to the mountain a lot. Because some, they used the robot there at times and all of that. So that thing, I don't know, I didn't think of it. You know, in dreams, I happen, the spiritual things. The next thing I just heard myself say, In your uncle Jesus. You mean I say, In your uncle Jesus. The woman staggered again. That's another, another dream entirely, another vision entirely. So when I saw that In your uncle Jesus was walking, 
I don't even pronounce it anywhere. But that's what happened to me in that dream. I continue. And she flattened and disappeared from the ground. Praise the Lord. Now what's happened? In that dimension, English didn't work. That spirit did not hear English. But the name of Jesus is beyond every language. Hallelujah. So in that vision, concerning what that deity, that demon carried, it needed its own language. Hallelujah. It needed its own language to deal with it. So when I said that, it's not that I thought of it. It's not that I said, okay, let me use it. No, no, it just came. Of course, that was the Holy Spirit helping me to deal with that spirit. So it's the same thing. There are situations that need the blood, but you will not want to apply the blood. Then, of course, as you apply the blood, the name of Jesus is there. Praise the Lord. I've seen cases where the blood of Jesus just sorted out situations. Hallelujah. Because when the enemy, just like he says, the blood breaks, breaks siege. Can you imagine that? It does break siege. But what I want to tell you today is that you don't use the blood anyhow. In the same way, you don't need to use the name of Jesus anyhow. You must use the name of Jesus. with. I mean, you must back it up with faith. Hallelujah. Think about it, what you're saying. In the name of Jesus. And as, as I should say, in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Everything stands still. Everything stands still to hear what next you're going to say. Everything is like, it's like you call on somebody, you shout at, you go to the, at the, the street there. And you shout. People around will just turn and what, what, who's shouting. That's how it is. When you say the name, the name of Jesus, everything stands still. Everything stands. Uh, nature, everything, the universe pays attention immediately. When you continue, the next thing is who is talking. Praise the Lord. The next thing that comes in, after they have stood to listen, the next thing is who is speaking. So who is speaking matters a lot. Immediately the enemy will scan you. It will scan you. What power do you have to call that name? Where is your position to call that name in this situation? They will scan you. If they find anything in you, you are in trouble. It will not work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm not saying that mercy doesn't speak for us. It speaks for us. So it is important how you use that name for you to be a Christian indeed because times are getting too tough for you to be playing with the name of Jesus or the arsenal of the blood. Hallelujah. Or the Holy Ghost. Do you know that situation you get is the Holy Ghost you call? Yes. And he answers you. I listened to one man, he was saying, what is this one in Africa, Nigeria? Power of the Holy Ghost, power of the Holy Ghost. What you don't understand, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Because when we, when, when, we, when, we, when we deal with the demons by fire, they actually see fire. They actually see fire. You hear a demon saying, stop the fire, stop the fire. No, 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 the fire is burning me. What is that? You can't argue things like that. You can't argue things like that. Praise the Lord. So we have too many arsenals to use anyhow. Too many weapons in the spirit to use anyhow. You must be careful. I want, there's a scripture she read. I want to round up with that scripture. To show you what I'm saying that. If you call the name of Jesus in vain, it will not work. Even when God, when you know that you have quoted the scriptures and you, you are sure that you have that victory. See, when you are faced with the real devil. When you are faced with the real devil. <laughs> That word that is not rooted in your spirit that you spoke will not sustain. Hallelujah. That word that is not rooted in your spirit that you just, will not sustain. When you, you are faced with the real devils. Now look at this guy she read. In uh, Second Kings. Take that Second Kings chapter 3 and go and study it. Just write it down. Study the whole Second Kings chapter 3. She talked about the weak, the, the, the hidden king that slaughtered his son and the, the, the battle turned against the Israelites, the children of God. Praise the Lord. He slaughtered his son in the midst of fierce battle and the battle changed. And the Israelites ran away. Israelites that were winning ran away. Why? Power. Blood of different dimensions carry different power. To the one who sacrifices. To the one who does that. Praise the Lord. This king was 
a hidden king, an idol worshiper. But I want to show you something. If you can just open with me to that first, Second Kings. No, Second Kings. Ahab's son. I bring it from NLT. Ahab's son, Joram, began to rule over Israel in the 18th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. Ahab's son, after Ahab died, reigned over Israel while Jehoshaphat was reigning over Judah. He reigned in Samaria 12 years. Watch this, verse 2. He did what was evil. Watch this. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but not to the same extent of his father and his mother. His father and mother were who? Jezebel and Ahab. Their own was too much. This is their son. He did evil, but not to the extent of his father and mother. But watch this. He at least tore down the sacred pillars of ba Baal that his father had set up. Verse 3, verse 3, verse 3. Nevertheless, he continued in the sins that Jeroboam, son of Nebat, had committed and led the people of Israel to commit. What did that guy commit? The guy built, um, built uh, a calf, you know, so that Israel would worship and not go to Jerusalem to worship God. That was the sin that destroyed Israel. Hallelujah. Now they said this was the sin he continued in. Do you understand this now? Now he continued in this sin and want to lead Israel now to war. You want to lead the people to war, your hands are not clean. You want to lead the people of God to war, but your hands are not clean. And you want to face a hidden king who knows how to give sacrifice to his God. Hallelujah. A hidden king who knows how to give sacrifice to his own God. And you, your hands are not clean. You're serving God, you're serving other things. And you want to go and fight. Yes, okay, God loves his people. He will always be with his people. They went to fight. And yes, they were winning. Yes, yes. But see what happened. Verse 20 something. Um, when they call Elisha, to come and, you know, pray for them or something. Elisha came. When Elisha came, watch what Elisha said. In verse 13 first. I want to show you things, something that, sometimes when you read the scripture, you overpass it, you won't understand. And you say, but why, why did God do this? What happened? Why would God allow a hidden king to win? Verse 13, it says, there's another verse there. Yes, the Lord speaks. Son of Joshua. Okay, verse 13. Of the same way we are, three. When Elisha came to meet Jehoshaphat and and um, um, Jerome. You know what they said to him? He said, why are you coming to me? Elisha asked the king of Israel, go to the pagan prophets of your father and mother. Praise the Lord. That tells you how bad it was. How the, the prophets were not happy with him. The way he continued in those sins. And yet this was a prophet that was needed to help them in the place of war. But King Joram of Israel said, no, for it was the Lord who called us three kings here only to be defeated by the king of Moab. Elisha replied, as long as the Lord liveth, almighty is, whom I serve, I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't even bother with you except for my respect for the king, for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Do you get that? Elisha didn't, but because Jehoshaphat was a good king. Jehoshaphat feared God. But this guy was bad. So Elisha said, I won't even have answered you. This gives you um, a, a, an understanding of how the prophet viewed him. That means he was bad. And here now he was going to fight war with this kind of idolatry in his hands. And the Bible says, where is that? I think it's 20 something. It should be 26. 26, yes. Watch this, verse 26. When the king of Moab saw that he was losing the battle, was losing the battle to the Israelites. 
He left 700 of his sword men in a desperate attempt to break through the enemy line, enemy, enemy lines near the king of Edom. But he failed. Verse 27. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. So there was great anger against Israel. And the Israelites withdrew and returned to their own land. Praise the Lord. You can't be calling Jesus when your hands are not clean. You can't just be calling Jesus and expect answer immediately in a situation. No, 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 no. You are not living right. You want God to answer. I, in this our time, the mercy of God is so great. Praise the Lord. But don't depend on that and live. You don't know when, you don't know how. You don't know the last day of man's life. Don't depend on that. Straighten your life. Praise the Lord. This guy took his son. Imagine the, ne the heir, the next person that would have taken over him. His only son that would have taken over him is thrown when he dies. He didn't care. He took him and, 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 and slaughtered him on the wall for his God. Slaughtered his own son. As soon as he slaughtered that young man, the world turned. The spirit of the blood changed the world. Why did the blood work for them? Because the Israelites were walking away from the ways of God. The king who led the war was not right with God. Praise the Lord. God had to draw back himself. Wow. Who is this man? Who is this man? This is what I'm about to do here in hundreds of thousands of years to come. And this man has done this. Praise the Lord. He's negative, but he connotes a lot in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. God withdrew from the Israelites back. Because there are sacrifices that are past, past sacrifice. Do you understand it? Can't serve God and be doing as you like. And expect God to answer for you anytime, any moment you just appear. No. Live right for God. Praise the Lord. Live right for God. Live right for God. Don't live anyhow. Why is it that the name of Jesus is not working for us today? It's like the name is not working for us today. Except individuals have their testimonies. And so too many sham, too many lies, too many cover cover, too many deeds in churches just to make it look like we are helping Jesus' name to work. Hallelujah. Because we, we, are, we are living outside who we say we are, who we say we are calling. And God cannot be a part of that. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the sons of Sceva. They held the demon possessed man. In the name of Jesus, Paul preached. In the name of Jesus, Paul. Ah, the demons. In the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. He was moving. He turned again and screamed and, and screamed them. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? <laughs> there was the demons will scream you immediately. When you begin to mention that they will they will shake, then they will scream you. Who is mentioning this name? Who are you? I told you that before, right? You have seen it there. Then I said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who? Jesus we know. Paul we know. You, who are you? You, who are you? Because they think they don't see any dossier of Jesus around them. They don't see anything about Christ in them. They deep, the Bible says the demons beat them blue and black. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The demons beat them blue and black. You don't try that. Hallelujah. That things you don't try. So today we have watered the name of Jesus down because of our style. You see, I was praying. I didn't know she was going to make this. You know, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, I was praying. And I began to speak concerning the blood of Jesus. I said, Lord, I call upon the blood to speak for me this night. Something happened to me yesterday. I call the blood to speak for me. I call the blood from the mercy seat. I call the blood from the ark of the mercy seat. Because I know the ark is in heaven. There are things the Holy Spirit brings into your spirit when you are in this situation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are things he brings away in a situation. Something just happened to me yesterday. And so when I went in to pray, I said, no, no, no. I have to deal with this in prayer. The devil is after my life on every side. After my life on every side. Praise the Lord. After my life on every side. <laughs> oh God. So I just started speaking. I said, the blood upon the ark, the message, the message is in the ark in heaven. I call the blood to speak for me. I call the blood to walk for me. I declare the blood of Jesus has power over anything that I don't understand that is happening to me right now. I began to speak. I began to speak. I began to speak. 
The next thing, ah, I check, I check, I check. I didn't feel the thing the way it was again. I check. And then after that, I began to command, command in the name of Jesus, out, out. I just turned like this to carry something. To carry a bailer of water. I just turned like this. The next thing I heard was, can. I didn't twist so much. That was it. That was it. I, the pain was so horrible. That was it. I said, what is this? I said, I'm not taking paracetamol. I'm not taking anything. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take anything. I lay down like that. I said, I'm not going to take In the morning, I got up. I went to around 3 a.m. I said, I went to the prayer room. And that's when this prayer came out of me. Praise the Lord. And there and then we dealt with the matter. Praise the Lord. The blood will answer for you. And the Holy Spirit will put. See, the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. He, he teaches us how to pray. He knows when you should apply the blood. So he will just bring certain language, certain words into your mouth. And you'll be wondering, no, on, on, on a normal date, on a normal day, I can't pray like this. Praise the Lord. Then you just succumb knowing that it's the Holy Spirit leading this prayer. But you cannot do these things without studying the scripture. Without knowing the scripture. Because it is from the scripture the Holy Spirit will bring things to your heart. In the place of prayer. He will bring scriptures that you never imagine. But they are, they are there in your spirit because you have read, you have studied. Then in a certain situation, he will bring the scriptures out. And you will use them to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The power in the blood cannot be overemphasized. It cannot be overemphasized. The power in the name of Jesus cannot be overemphasized. But you've got to know how to use the name. It works. The name of Jesus works. Hallelujah. See, they try me a lot. I see a lot of visions. A lot. A lot. It's always with all women. All women. Like, oh, I don't know. This boy is the same. I saw one like that in my vision. Young ladies were passing. As they passed through a door, she would just do like this. These young ladies would just fall and die. So I was like, I was standing from, you know, a stone throw and was watching her. So when she finished killing, like, I saw she killed like two girls. Do I really pray that? So whoever those ladies represent, I take them back to life. So I, I, as she finished doing that, she turned like she had finished what she wanted. She wanted to go. Here she met me. And her face just jammed. So as I looked at her, she looked at me. It's like she wanted to go into action. I said, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I'm just saying the name of Jesus. Yes, she fell on the ground. This was just three days ago. She fell on the ground. And as she fell on the ground, I said, die. Die, die. <laughs> and I woke up. Praise the Lord. The things I see that I cannot count for you. Praise the Lord. But the name works. Sometimes I know God uses me to just deliver people. So sometimes, especially when I'm doing deliverance prayer like we did this few, few more weeks that we're still doing, I get attacked a lot. I get attacked a lot. And I know it when I come and I see how things are happening. I know it. But sometimes the people I'm praying for don't even understand. You know, they don't even know. You know, sometimes you negate, negate all these things without knowing. But I know what comes back to me. And only Jesus helps me. Hallelujah. Don't take the name of Jesus for granted. There is power in that name. There is power in that name. If you like, say, Lord, show me the power in the name of Jesus. Pray sincerely from your heart. You will see a vision. You will see you use the name of Jesus. You see what happens. Talk about the blood, the same thing. Say, Lord, show me the power in the blood. Go to sleep. One day, one day, God will show you. You will, be, you will wake up shocked. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is nothing that the name of Jesus, the, as the weapons that God has given us cannot do. Hallelujah. Look at all the scriptures she read. Look at all the scriptures she read. All of the scriptures. We have been brought in by the blood. We have been brought in by the blood. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, the blood washed us, bought by the blood, washed by the blood. That is too deep. Hallelujah. The ordinary mind, see, if you are not in a if you don't have a deliverance understanding, you will castigate everything that you see. You won't understand. But I found out that there are people that got called and gives you understanding in that dimension. Praise the Lord. There are pastors that will not dare to say in the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. They don't know they are not called. They tell you I'm not called, please. I give you the word, hold the word. I'm not called to cast out no demon. I'm not, praise the Lord. There are a lot of pastors that only tell the word. When he reach for anything, they say, ah, go to hospital, 
pray. If it doesn't work, maybe you look for a deliverance minister. But me, I'm not cut out for that. Praise the Lord. Because they don't want Wahala. Because the Wahala is serious. If God didn't call you there and don't give you the strength in that dimension, you go there, you're in trouble. You want to imitate somebody, you're in trouble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have you been blessed? You're going to sit back and meditate on the blood. Meditate again on the name of Jesus. Meditate on that name. There is power in the name and in the blood of Jesus. That power never wears out. We are the ones who understand, don't understand the power that is there that makes us call the name and it doesn't.